And welcome back to another episode of the Million Dollar Coach podcast, joined by my ever faithful and reliable cohorts, Ash and Sam. How are you guys? Doing good. How are you? Doing great as we approach the Easter weekend. This will probably go out over that weekend. So Mm -hmm. um, good times. Today, I thought we would talk about something that might be a little bit um, contentious. We never step away from the hard conversations. When are we but, not talking about something that could be contentious? Yeah, that's true. Like we're, <laughs> we're very contrarian. Right. But some of the feedback we've had from uh, the podcast is, you know, coaches are like, it's all well and good to say, you know, create a profile and, and talk to, you know, put content out there, but nobody's listening to me. Yeah. Nobody's taking action from what I'm saying and I'm, I'm doing all the things. Like why does nobody you know, engage with me. Yep. So I thought that was a really good one because that seems to be a common cry that's that's coming back from, from you know, not million-dollar coach land. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thoughts? Well, I know where I want to start. Ash, what about you? <laughs> Go, Sam. <laughs> so the, the thing I keep coming, like, first of all, it's like it's like fitness. Like so many things, it's like fitness. Nobody walks into a CrossFit gym with a five minute mile and a 300 pound snatch. Mm. Like it just doesn't happen. And like, turns out if you don't do something over and over and over again, the chances of you being really good at it automatically are almost zero. So why we as individuals in the like ecosystem of social media think that by... (laughs) And like, and I'm guilty of this. This is why I'm laughing. It's like, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to design the world's best post. It is going to shock some people. And, you know, I spent an hour and a half planning it and another 30 minutes filming and way too long editing because I don't know how to edit. And I switch, do it three or four times, once on my computer and maybe twice on my phone. And I finally post it and the comment and like I get is from my mom, like, <laughs> <laughs> which thanks mom. I, I really do appreciate that. But also, like, I'm not going to hit 10 million people right away. Like, (laughs) there's, there's, there's like a curve to this. It's the same as the 10,000 hour rule. You know, Mm. I'm trying to get good at something and social media is a skill because it's a version of marketing and there are many types of marketing. We can talk about that at some point, but just like nobody walks in with a 300 pound snatch, nobody walks in, almost nobody walks into the social media game and Mm. is killing it in terms of content and editing and copywriting and all of the little pieces that we take for granted. And that's why there are social media marketing professionals in the same way that there are CrossFit professionals. Right. Yep. Ash? (laughs) Um, No, it goes, (laughs) keeping it in the fitness space, it goes to, you know, repeatability. How often are you how, how consistent are you? How often are you doing it? Um, and are you repeating the same type of things? If I go in and I'm working on, you know, snatch balances and drop snatches and snatch lift offs, my snatch is going to get better. If I'm going to do some snatch balances one day, some strict ring muscle up work another day, uh, try to run faster another day, like, and then go handstand work, Sure, you're going to slowly get better at all of those things, but if you really want your snatch to get better, then we got to work on the snatch consistently and over and over with all the different things that attribute Mm. to the snatch. Yeah. So, and I am number one guilty of the social media thing, as Lisa knows, (laughs) Uh, being being my fit feeling coach. um, Feeling triggered there, Ash. I I was off social media for like two years and have tried to get back on and I am not consistent right now. And I don't have a ton of followers and I I can't, I only, the finger points right here, you know? And so that's, yeah. So, but if we take that a step further, Mm -hmm. because we're all about, you know, uh, solving problems, we want to solve the problems for the coaches out in the ecosystem that go, I can't make a living doing this. I know all these things. I've got all my levels. I, you know, when I do work with people, I really help them. But 
no one's getting my message and they come and they present and they go look you know i'm posting every day i am you know doing all the things that you know the the gurus pay to do for your socials and your reels and mixing up your content and and i'm doing the things consistently so by that metric i should be like uber mega successful and not just have you know mom liking my posts (laughs) shout out so there is yeah we love them but Mm -hmm. there is a science and a strategy behind and a psychology i guess getting people to engage and want to um or to identify and relate to and think yeah like sam he can he can help me he's not just a cool dancer on on his instagram or his tiktok or whatever but you know yeah he does we've seen them (laughs) on here we have seen them here I, I like to tell people of him doing this. <laughs> like yeah, that's, yeah, that's one. That's I can, I can, one. I can wipe, like I can waltz, I can swing dance, but I cannot get down. So yeah. that's <laughs> like, it's if, if old timey music is playing I'm all set, but like the moment, yeah. like at weddings, Oh, it's bad. Um, <laughs> I, I, I love that. So this is for me, Lisa, your point comes back to why's versus what's right. Yes. So we talk about coming into the, into the social media marketing landscape and we're using social media as an example. It's the most prevalent example. Like, you know, I try to do this thing and I'm not engaging with people. Engagement doesn't happen only on social media. It can happen Mm -hmm. in person. It can happen in articles. It can happen through writing or video content. Like there's any number of ways that this can happen, but all of them include the same principles. And the what's of these are, I need to have amazing looking video because, you know, well, you know, the person who has 10 million followers has amazing looking video. And so that means I need to spend a thousand dollars on a Canon camera and learn how to use it. And, you know, stupid amounts of money per month on an Adobe Photoshop uh, subscription and crap like that. It's not, that's not what we're talking about. That stuff is what's even editing and, um, like flashy stuff is what's as well. The mm. why behind this, the first place to start is a concept called positioning, right? Mm. So when we talk about positioning, we are using the term positioning as a container term, right? Positioning is you as a service provider, as a value provider, being acutely aware of what your audience wants and what it takes to make sure that the people who are listening to you or who you are trying to attract or who are attracted to you are holding you in high regard, right? So to do that, you have to, you know, know who you are, what is your niche, you know, and how am I being deliberate about that? Am I just creating like following real trends and like doing things that other people are doing or am I providing value? You know, Mm. there's a whole bunch of other stuff that we can go through with this, but this concept of positioning and in some ways I'm, I was accidentally very, very fortunate when it comes to positioning because of who like in the ecosystem, like who I was brought up around and who I was exposed to early on. Mm -hmm. Um, but that does not in any way allow me to abdicate the responsibility that I have as a coach and as a professional coach, more importantly, to consider my positioning, to act deliberately in accordance with that, and to provide value to my clients. And my clients, <clears throat> thank God for the internet, I can leverage it and reach every flipping human being I want to, but not all of them are my clients, you know? Nice. So by being aware of who I am and what my niche is, I can speak directly to people. And I have I have clients come back to me. You know, they listen to this podcast, they listen to my other podcast, Talking Average Fitness, they see something I, I put on the internet and they're like, I felt like you were talking directly to me. Mm. Those are my people. That's how yep. I know I've hit the nail on the head. And it is when you can get something that like we put, you know, I guess we're a good example of, you know, we're putting content out there and we, You know, we want to talk to coaches, but not all coaches are our people. We want to talk to coaches that are 
sick and tired and frustrated and they, they, they're passionate and they want to make it a full-time career and they can't, or they can't figure out the secret source to, you know, creating their own revenue and, you know, valuing themselves truly. And when we get comments back going, oh, that podcast really hit me in the feels, which our last episode did about, you know, burnout. And I know that a lot of coaches suffer with that. And it's for us now is to provide that value, but also why should people listen mm -hmm. to us? Yeah. And if you're putting content out there is why should people listen to you? Like are you just putting out content because you like the sound of your own voice or, you know, you've got this fun new filter? <laughs> 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 or are you putting it out there because, like, fuck, I genuinely want to help people and this little nugget that I have is going to help people so I got, I'm compelled to put it out to the world. Yeah. Like, is, what's your reason, your why? And it comes back yeah. to Yeah, yeah. And it, it's, you know, so we talked about the why. It has to start with why, right? Like, Fitfiliate as a company helps once, one, they started with affiliate owners. And now with the MDCP, we're focusing on coaches. And like you said, and not just any coach, but a very specific coach. Coaches that you're not doing this on the side for hobby because you just really like it and you know, it gets you a membership or you have more time in your community. Like those are all great. And we need those coaches, but yes. they are not our target, right? Mm. We're, we're trying to help the people who are like, I gave up my job as a chemist making 120 grand a year to be a coach and do this. And I don't know if it's going to work out. Mm. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. You know, like those are yeah. the people we're trying to help of like, I want to do this for a living, but it doesn't seem realistic because mm. there is a, a dialogue out there that is you, you can't make a living doing this mm. or, or you don't do it for the money. Right. We've talked about yeah. that one too, but so, so, okay. So our why is to help those coaches. And then it's also, now with like going towards positioning mm -hmm. of you know who else has done this in this space and mm. what have they done you know and then it's it becomes about okay like how now it doesn't mean copycat everything they've done and try to be exactly like them because yeah. as sam mentioned niche we all have something that w that somebody is looking for we all have that little extra experience that other people have gone through that we can help with. And it, mm -hmm. it kind of, uh, you know, bringing all of that together as opposed to just throwing content out willy nilly for anybody, anything, right. If we go back to the fitness example of if I want to get my snatch better, I got to do all the snatch work. Well, if you're putting out content for, you know, affiliate owners and then coaches and then, moms and dads and then kids and like what are you tar what are, what's your target how are you going mm -hmm. to get more people to follow you if you're constantly you know even if you're consistently posting yeah. are you targeting yeah right yeah mm -hmm. it was a very roundabout way well, of saying no 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 it was per you know what you it was perfect because it is it's you you might find a follower who engages with you and goes yeah that was really good content i'm going to follow sam because i want more of that and then suddenly you know sam changes direction to talk about you know chicken breeding or something next week and it's like no 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 i wanted to know more about whatever whatever the first thing was so yeah. if you can be specific you're going to cut down a lot of work and a lot of your own barriers yeah. where you don't have to come up with you know, 50 gazillion new topics, it's like be an expert in your area yeah. and speak to that. Yeah. And I, well, I think I'm, speaking, uh, sorry, Sam. No. Being an expert in your area probably segues to the next next part that we're talking about positioning is that, you know, we are to be the experts but to do the learning on behalf of the client, not expect the client to do that. But yeah. jump in, Sam. Well, it's, this, that's a perfect segue. So great example. And maybe one of the best examples, you know, if you're of a certain age in terms of your experience in CrossFit, you'll know the name Kelly Starrett, right? So Kelly Starrett, the creator of Mobility Wad, which has then since become the Ready State, um, original owner of uh, CrossFit San Francisco before it closed, like 
every day, almost every day, for a year, mm. he, in his garage, filmed by his wife with his kids and his assortment of PT equipment and workout gear on a Sony Handycam or whatever the hell passed for think. video equipment in 2011, filmed the video and put it on YouTube. And he mm. called it the Daily Mobility Wad, but the thing he was solving, it was, how do I get regular people out of pain? Mm. Right? Like they're in pain, they're sore, things hurt, they don't know what's going on, they don't understand the underlying principles. And the only resource is a physio or a PT or, you know, some mm. or like an AT. Well, the delta between those two is education and knowledge. And so Kelly's like, let's make people smarter. And so he talked yeah. every day about how to relieve this pain and how to relieve yeah. that pain. And then while he was doing that, he wrote how to become a supple leopard, which is mm. maybe the best selling movement encyclopedia of all time. Yeah. So he relentlessly delivered value to people. And I think the beauty of the value he delivered, it was the way in which it was delivered. So he would talk it and like he was actually doing it on the camera, but he'd talk about a body part, not as like, well, I want to extend my femur to the, you know, 90 degree, you yeah. know, via the sagittal plane twice removed. It's like, we're going to get down, we're going to hold the bottom of this squat and it's going to be really spicy down here, but yeah. you know, I'm going to rock back and forth. And he made it in terms of for a two to three minute to 10 minute video yeah. that everyone knew what yeah. they were doing. Layman's you know, chart. Yeah, yeah and, that's, I mean, and that that's a gift but it's because if people go oh well i didn't feel dumb watching that or think yeah well i can't follow that so i'm not it's too complicated yeah i'm not going to do it i mean every day when i first i started crossfit in 2011 and the box i was at had mobility wad on their website so you'd see the yeah. daily wad and you'd see a link to this mobility wad every day that's where i learned how to use a lacrosse ball mm -hmm. uh, barbell mashing all that stuff just yeah. because of and the way that he communicated it. And I didn't have to go Google then how to release traps mm -mm. or anything. No. And, was, there's, yeah. and there's two things at play there. There's two very, very, very important principles at play there. He, you know, like if you weren't looking for those two principles, you might completely miss them. The first is he understands, he is an expert in his topic. He understands it so well that he can convey meaning and understanding at a non-clinical level, right? So he doesn't have to use anatomy terms. He says, take the ball, put it under your butt cheek. And like, yeah. everyone's like, I have a butt cheek, cool. And they just yeah. like, do it, you know? Yeah. Um, the, the other thing is by doing that, he accomplished the second bit, which is your audience, they come to you because you have done the learning for them, mm. right? Don't be an encyclopedia, be the cliff notes, like mm. provide the value, like go right to the last chapter and be like, mm. do the thing. Like there's a bunch of reasons mm. why you want to do the thing, but do the thing, you know? Mm. And as a part of several other pieces that have to go on with positioning, you then, it helps you to think of you know, how you consume information. I'm mm. no longer consuming information on behalf of myself. I'm consuming information with the understanding and the knowledge that later I will have to convey this to someone else. Totally yeah. changes how you approach learning. And the demonstration of mastery is, can I tell this to an eight-year-old? So, you know, we spoke yesterday. Um, we had a guest on the um, Michael from uh, CrossFit Downtown Atlanta talking about, you know, the kids course and how he applied some of those cues to adults because, you know, it was so simplified and everybody understood that and you know we talk about coaches in terms of the value of a coach which we also have mentioned on numerous podcasts is compressed time yeah. so you're right that's why we're doing the learning here yeah. we understand all the science behind it we're just going to tell you what to do and how to do it yeah and or i'm going to give you that information a way that you can digest in three to five minutes and you can action something and move on that's the gift yes because people if they watch something and they can't 
like I've been sucked into watching some videos on TikTok or Reels where people are going to do this amazing thing with this cake or whatever it is and you know, oh, this is going to be an amazing effect and they keep drawing it out going, yeah, we're going to do this and, and like 20 minutes later you're like, that's 20 minutes of my life I'm not going to get back because I didn't get anything <laughs> out of it. And yeah. I, I go for it every time but if we're putting out content where someone at the end goes, yeah, I'm going to go away and do that now, yeah, then that is that's your power which is going to position you Mm-hmm. well ahead of anybody else in the game oh yeah and if mm-hmm. yeah and if you're sitting there thinking like well everything i know that i could help people with it's already been done i mean think about like how many other mobility gurus are out there in the space that still mm-hmm. get thousands millions of followers just like kelly starrett there is There's a enough. need for all of them Right. And it's just going to be the way you deliver a certain way is going mm. to speak to somebody. So don't be afraid yeah. of it. Don't try to be just like them. Do it your way. Right. Mm. Like there's 5,000 types of deodorant, toothpaste, mouthwash. <laughs> they all sell. They're all yeah. just a little different. Everybody's got their reason for liking their thing. Well, I guess it, that almost brings it back to one of the mindset mandates is, you know, have an abundance mindset. There's enough for everybody. Mm-hmm. Like when you look at how many people in the world, and if we're trying to solve the world's most vexing problem, mm-hmm. we need more coaches. And you're right, just because Sam and I might explain things, talk about the same topic, someone's going to relate better to me over uh, on part of it or someone will relate better to Sam depending on their stories and their narrative and their experiences. So we need more voices to get more done yeah yeah so that was a great point ash that's that's awesome because yeah people tend to stop then and overthink go well i'm not as good as a kelly starrett you don't have to be you just have to be good at what you choose to speak on be an ex pick your pick your area and speak on that and become you know the most knowledgeable that you can on your area for your people Mm -hmm. yeah yeah and it's vitally important it's vitally vitally important you know and it and this is, and this is again why niche is so important. Like, if you haven't figured out who your people are, you know, yeah. it's okay to like take shots in the dark in terms of marketing and seeing what hits and seeing what people respond to. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Yeah. But also, like, be okay if things totally miss because you haven't figured out what the hell you're talking about, and that's that's okay too. You yeah. know, like the first time you taught someone how to do a snatch, you were not Coach Bergner. You know, and so <laughs> you're figuring your stuff out and, you know, and, and even Coach Bergner, um, he had a fantastic interview with Stefan Roche from CrossFit HQ a while back and Coach B was talking about how he conveyed information to people and the story he told was he's working with a bunch of teenagers, you know, and he's like... Mm-hmm. I need you to, you know, activate your lats and pull the bar close into your body. And and then I want you to rotate your torso to an upright position, knees slightly bent, fully extend, shrug tall at the top, hips open, knees open, ankles open. And then like a teenager looked at him and said, Coach B, why don't you just say jump? (laughs) And he's like, why don't I just say jump? And so even when we figure stuff out, that does that's not to say that we can't find ways to do better. Or even when we're good at something. There's not, there's nothing that says that we can't be better or can't find a better way of doing something. Um, Different too, right? Different versions of it speak to different people. And it's, and that's okay. It's supposed to. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, we're all unique as coaches and, you know, our audience are all unique as people, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, to relate it, I guess, back to the gym, like you could tell one member, to jump and they're going to get it. You could say something to the next member, you know, push your knees out and suddenly they're lifting their hips because they don't know their elbow from their butthole and they're kind of moving everything around. It's like <laughs> that's not going to work for them, you know. It's kind of like uh, I'm moving all sorts of different things. It's like <laughs> push your knees out, like how hard can it be? But they don't understand that. Yeah. So, so using that one, like, we, you know, the only good cue is the one that works and it's the same as these what we're trying to convey here is like it doesn't have to be perfect you don't have to have 
the perfect script, the perfect words, just put something out and understand that the right people who need to hear it, they're waiting to hear it, they're waiting for your voice, Yeah, um, will get that. Yes, but also, or rather, and in addition to. Yeah. You can do that mindfully. Like it's okay to put something mm. out there, but that's like saying, hey, go smash it. Just like find mm. intensity in the workout where a smart coach is going to say, yes, but also maybe practice something every once in a while and like mm. be deliberate about something. Mm. And so like, I think we can provide some keys to help people take this concept of positioning, right? And begin to apply it deliberately right? Mm. It's a couple big things, right? First big thing is you have to, like all of this presumes that you want to be a professional coach. If you don't want to be a professional coach, we're probably not the podcast for you. Just throwing that out there. Um, Thanks for listening. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. You know, thanks thanks for the listen. Um, Thanks for the the, the statistic. Um, (laughs) But if you want to be a professional coach, part of that term professional is you must position yourself as a credible source. So, you know, you can do that a lot of different ways. You speak knowledgeably on things that you have learned. You fact check, you, you know, make sure you're not talking out your ass. You know, it's, it's a whole bunch of ways to do that, but you must position yourself as credible. Um, And then based on being credible, then you deliver content that is valuable to the people who you want to reach and you must do so regularly in the same way that you come in and you have to practice fitness three to five times a week. It's probably a good candidate for social media content three to five times a week, (laughs) you know? Yeah. Yes. Am I still running or go ahead? No, no. Yeah. Yeah. You go. No. Well, (laughs) once you've done that or while doing that rather, right. It's not just that you position yourself as credible and then you are delivering content. For example, it's not as useful for me to say, hey, you know what this hot new trend that you should try is? Eating unprocessed foods. And it's like, (laughs) yes, but can I read about that in an advertisement from US News and World Report? Like, there's gotta be, there's gotta be something else. So like, Mm. Don't just find credible, valuable information, but try to push toward the leading edge, right? Otherwise, you're just kind of regurgitating potentially, Mm. right? So find things that people are asking questions about. There are a number of resources for you to do so, but in your niche, find things people are asking questions about and by positioning yourself as a credible source, provide valuable information that solves those questions or those problems. Or, you know, as we quite often see a lot on the socials now, um, people will, hey, what do you want to hear about? Ask me a question. And then they're gathering data from their audience about what they want to hear more on. We did it for this podcast is what are you struggling with and gave people some options. That's how come we spoke about burnout last week. Like it's do your own, you know, polling and research. Like people like to be asked and engaged. Yeah, They like to have their, you know, thing shared. Mm-hmm. Like, Absolutely. Ah. Mm. So there's there's one big scary one that mm. needs to be talked about. Um and I'll and I'll say this as a person who despite my outward facing demeanor, I really am an introvert. And so when I don't like when it. I <laughs> I'm not buying it, Sam. Sorry. Everybody says that. So like <laughs> I have stepped into the role of a person who like My wife, Katie, calls it my coach voice. She's like, she can tell when I put on my coach voice. And my coach voice is separate from who I am as an individual normally, like inside of my house with my family. Um, But I can't help it now. Like when someone asks me a question, coach voice turns on. And (laughs) and like, so I provide an answer like that. Um, Part of positioning is not just positioning yourself in a topic or in a niche and positioning yourself as leading edge. It is also positioning yourself relative to other experts and professionals in your field. Right? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to cut straight to the point here. You are going to have to talk to some people. 
Like you're not going to be able to avoid that. <laughs> and so like as the introvert, <clears throat> it's terrifying to, yeah. and I, and I went through this recently, um, even just to say, like to reach out to people and say, Hey, this is the thing that I'm trying to do. Mm. And I don't know if you know anyone who I might be able to help, but these are the people who I'm trying to help. And I'd love to have a conversation with you about what I'm trying to do and, um, and just, you know, chat about it. And out of those conversations, I got some of my first handful of clients, you know, mm -hmm. and that's, these are all people I know. They're my friends. They love me. They want to see that I'm successful. They, you know, they're not like randos on the internet. And yet it was still incredibly difficult for me to make myself big enough to mm. put out there the fact that I was doing this thing. Mm. And when I get to the other side of it, I'm like, well, that was dumb. Of course that was easy. But, <laughs> but right there at the precipice, I'm like, fuck, damn it. What the, you know, I just like freaking out. So yeah, um, you're good. Go ahead. They... Um, it is it is part of those limiting beliefs that we all carry as well as like, well, who's going to listen to me and who's yeah. going to? And, you know, like you, I am by nature an introvert. Like it's it's a very much a work. Because like when I first started doing, <clears throat> yes, Ash, it's true. When I first started <laughs> doing these podcasts, like it was a very big step out. Like I'm going to have my face on there and I'm talking and I've got, you know, Tony and, you know, Chuck sitting next to me and <clears throat> how do I even fit into that? I'm just going to be a button pusher, you know. Yeah. But then reaching out to people in the ecosystem to say, oh, hey, we want to line you up as a guest, we want to do this, like that was really like, oh. But the sooner you start doing that, you're like, oh, people, they're just people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And people like to help. Yeah. So if you reach out and say, hey, like I'm trying to get this thing off the ground, I'm really passionate about it, you know, I'd appreciate your help in X, Y, Z, then people love to do something good for somebody else, even if they, they really don't have do. to invest in it themselves. Yeah. Give them I, that gift. Well, it, it, and it is a gift and I'll, I'll give a great example. So I, I'm very, very fortunate. I have a mentor and a colleague who is also a good friend, um, Denise Thomas, and she, I'll never forget, I watched her give an interview one time. And the question was, well, how do coaches, how can coaches, you know, develop themselves further and how can they, you know, if they want to be on seminar staff, for example, like how can they get good enough? You know, what, like what's the, what's next? Yeah. And her answer was, I don't know a single person who's on staff who, if asked, would say no to helping yeah. someone who wanted to get better. Because yeah. everybody who's on staff had needed help to get on. And then mm -hmm. once they were on, mm -hmm. was continuously fed feedback in order to get better at their, like they didn't stop learning once they get the red shirt, you know? Yeah. And people want to help. Mm -hmm. People like don't, and I'll say this because I felt the same way, but now I know where it's different. Denise Thomas is a human. James yeah. Hobart is a human. You know, Austin Maliolo is a human. They're all regular people. <laughs> Send them a DM and mm. be like, hey, this is what I want to do with my life. How do I, mm. like, what would you recommend? How can I get better? You know? Well, look at the example we had from the podcast this week when I interviewed Christina Anderson. Um, mm. And she had her level one with Austin, then messaged him and go, I really want to make this my thing. Yeah. Like, I really want to do um, all of that. Like, and he's like, Well, if you're in this area, you know, I would love to help you as much as I can. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, and you can see where that led for her. Like, yeah. Just by asking now, how scary would that have been? This person who's just started and never even coached a class, but going, Hey, um, I, want to make this my thing can you yeah. help me and he was he was thrilled to do that yeah thrilled yeah. so yeah it's there's a lot of power in being vulnerable and asking um there's for sure. all of the power 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that's that's where the power is is being vulnerable because in being vulnerable you get to be open. People yeah. know when you're being open and when you're being honest. More than like more than the best sales script in the world, people can tell. They recognize yeah. it in another human being. I mean, unless you're a sociopath and then there, we got a whole other bunch of issues going on. But like <laughs> people <laughs> people know. Like they mm. recognize that. And yeah. Absolutely. Like create, start with where you are, start with your, your clients in the gym right now, start with your other coaches, create great, amazing, meaningful, reciprocal relationships with these people. Mm. And automatically you are networking. And so now we've taken away like the dirty connotation of the word networking, right? Mm. You're doing that already. Um, I was talking about this before the podcast. I want to make sure I say it here because I think it's a fantastic quote. There's a an awesome PhD psychologist out of Canada who says that life is not a game. Rather, life is a series of games. And he or she who wins is the person who gets invited to play the most often. Mm -hmm. So it's not about like, and like right in there, it's not about like, I'm going to do this thing and win. It's about I just keep, I just need to keep trying. And an inherent part of keeping trying or like continuing that process of trying is don't be a dink and people (laughs) will like want to help you and support you and have you in their circle. And where we are all trying to be professionals, like there's a, there's a a component of ascendance where I am trying to put myself near people who I look up to and who are doing the thing that I want to do. Mm. And in doing so and in helping them and learning from them, it elevates me. And mm. they were in the same position too. You know, they yeah. were, it's, it's, everyone's on a different part of the ladder. So like, no one's going to be like, yes, please help me. But then like also kicking the people underneath. Them. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Right. Like, yeah. And if, and if that is the case, they're the wrong people to ask for help and you don't want them, you don't want to be around them. And that, and you know, that you listen. Mm-hmm. And that's like an ongoing cycle because by, us asking someone above us in the next layer up for help, they are helping themselves by helping us because they're doing all the things we just talked about, finding different ways to communicate whatever message it is that we are seeking to understand so that we can get it and get to their level. And by them finding another way to communicate and getting another human to understand it, they have taken themselves up another notch. And let's and- not forget here. If you do this, I promise you, I've experienced it more times than I can remember or recount right now, but it happened recently. If you do this, if you practice this concept, do not be surprised when someone else comes to you and says, Hey, I mm-hmm. want to do what you're doing. Can you help me? Yeah. Talk about a mind fuck. Like, yeah, <laughs> that's how you know you're doing things right. You want and me to? <laughs> it, it, it's like, do you know who you're talking to? Yeah, are you um, sure? <laughs> the right email address. I think you're right. Yeah, like, but it, it happened to me recently, and it was it's a wonderful thing to be able to like people helped me, mm. and it's a wonderful thing to be able to turn around and be like, yes, I want to help you. This is what I did. Hopefully, it helps you. Mm. So. Yeah. I mean, I guess as we sort of roll out into the end of this this episode, but actionable steps to to reinforce that. What am what are my key steps when I finish listening to this podcast and I'm like, right, I'm gonna go do something. What am I gonna do? What are my steps? Your why is number one always. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You gotta you gotta have a why. Like if you're and if you're figuring out your why, that's fine. But know that you're if you're trying to be a professional coach you've got to occupy a certain space and that, that mm-hmm. is fed by your why. Mm-hmm. Um, the second thing is knowing your why and your audience deliver value regularly and consistently. Mm-hmm. And the value should solve a problem, right? Um, and if you're worried about like selling the farm, just think about Kelly Starrett who made 365 videos and then had a best-selling book. Um, and then finally, you got to talk to some humans. You got to reach yeah. out. You got to take that most terrifying of all steps 
and tell people like tell people what you're doing. Start yeah. with your spouse or partner. Yep. Then a friend, then a colleague, then go extend a family and like iteratively go out. And as you go out further and further and further, you will realize more and more people want you to win. Mm. Perfect. Beautiful. So, you know, just go do the thing. Put your limiting self-beliefs to the side. Yep. You have something worth talking about. You have knowledge that not only um, deserves to be shared but needs to be. There are people who need to hear what you have to say in the way that you have to say it. Yeah. You know, there are people who need to work with you to fix their problems. Yeah. But if you don't put yourself out there, then they're not going to find you. They're not going to find you. And that's doing them a disservice. So if you feel like that you're being weighed down by the weight of imposter syndrome and and being, you know, trying to make it too perfect, make it about them. You're doing it for them, not for you. Same as, you know, we talked about educating yourself. You're educating yourself, not for you. Yeah. But to, for them. So, you know, I'm putting this out there because it's for other people, not for me. Mm. And it makes it far easier to push apart you know, push past all that, those stories we tell ourselves in a head when you can make it about other people. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Good chat team. Nice little episode today. Uh, love your work. Looking forward to the next one. And we have a special guest coming up in 10 days. Next week. 10 days. 10 days. Mr. Pat Barber will be on the episode on the podcast. So keep an eye out for that one. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. We will see you on the next one. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.